Oliver Berkman, The Antidote, Happiness for People Who Can't Stand Positive Thinking. Prepare to embark on a journey that might just change your entire perspective on happiness. The Antidote, Happiness for People Who Can't Stand Positive Thinking, by Oliver Berkman serves as a guide to rethinking our relationship with positive thinking and embracing a more balanced approach. Throughout the summary, we'll explore the ironic process theory, the pitfalls of affirmations, the role of failures in our lives, the importance of accepting negative emotions, the concept of negative capability, and differing cultural and philosophical traditions that value negativity. Instead of seeking happiness through relentless pursuit of positivity, learn to leverage negative emotions and experiences for a more profound and long-lasting sense of fulfillment. The Paradox of Positive Thinking The pursuit of perfection and positive thinking may lead to negative outcomes. The ironic process theory exemplifies how suppressing thoughts can ultimately make them more prevalent. Affirmations, meant to boost self-esteem, can worsen it as people reject affirmations that clash with their negative self-image. Studies show that positive thinking does not necessarily lead to happiness, and may, in fact, make one feel worse. The key is to accept and avoid the urge to control every aspect of life. Embracing Failure The life of true risk-takers is often rife with failures and setbacks. Even so, Self-help gurus insist that their readers can achieve their goals with perseverance and positive thinking. This idea is debunked by the bankruptcy of a prominent self-help author who preached the power of positive thinking while his life crumbled. The media also plays a role in perpetuating the myth of effortless success by highlighting only the positive outcomes of risky predictions. However, a study reveals that failure is an inevitable part of life, and indeed, even success can be attributed to pure chance. By denying the existence of failure, we deny our mortality. Embracing our innate tendency to fail can lead to happier and healthier lives. Embracing the inevitable. Most of us try to avoid negative emotions in life, but we can't selectively numb emotions. Writer Breen Brown and monk Thomas Merton suggest that focusing our energies on not feeling something can make us end up feeling it more. However, some cultures have customs that help us contemplate our mortality and accept death. For instance, in Mexico, they celebrate the Day of the Dead by toasting to everyone who's died, death itself, and consuming large amounts of tequila and sugar skulls. According to surveys, Mexico ranks among the happiest nations in the world. The ancient Romans also had a similar contemplation of mortality, which stemmed from the joy of being alive. They instructed their victorious generals to remember their mortality to avoid hubris. Embracing uncertainty. Life is inherently unpredictable, yet we often seek closure and clear-cut answers. Instead, we should develop a negative capability, the willingness to accept our inner lives, imperfections, and uncertainties. Psychologist Paul Pearsall calls it openture, embracing the fact that we can't dot every I and cross every T in life and still push forward. This approach aligns with philosophies of the Stoics and Buddhists who focus on controlling their feelings and thoughts during uncertain times. Incorporating negative capability as a skill in everyday life allows us to reflect on failures, accept imperfections, and get things done without trying to eliminate feelings of insecurity. Facing Fears Rather than letting fear consume us, confronting it head-on can help alleviate anxiety-inducing power. Albert Ellis, a psychologist advocating for stoicism, suggests that experiencing the unpleasantness of our fears can help us better understand them. By exaggerating our fears, we can see how irrational our thinking may be. Ellis recommended an exercise known as the subway station exercise, which involves purposely embarrassing oneself in public. By realizing that publicly embarrassing oneself is not as bad as initially imagined, the anxiety-inducing power of fear diminishes. Long-lasting calm can be achieved through negative visualization rather than the short-lived and fragile happiness gained through positive thinking. Confronting and facing fears can sever the connection between negative ideas and the recurring feeling of dread, leading to better outcomes than those initially feared. 
In the field of cognitive behavioral psychology, confronting fears is a well-established method for dealing with anxiety and uncertainty. The Backwards Route to Happiness The Stoics and Buddhists embrace negativity to achieve happiness while Day of the Dead and Memento Mori rituals remind us of the finite nature of life. Happiness is contingent upon experiencing negative emotions. Contrary to popular belief, the desire for happiness is not universal, and different cultures have viewed negativity as a positive thing at various times. The Stoics and Buddhists are two prominent groups who take the backward route to happiness. The Stoics imagine worst-case scenarios, so when something terrible happens, it is always less severe than their expectations. Meanwhile, Buddhists detach from their situations and feelings and observe the state therein to achieve a sense of peace and tranquility through meditation. Studies show that such practices can decrease sensitivity to pain. The Mexican Day of the Dead celebration and ancient Roman memento mori rituals embrace death in order to value and enjoy life, accepting the finite nature of existence. All these cultures agree that true happiness is contingent upon experiencing negative emotions, or at least not running away from them. It prompts us to ask ourselves, what does happiness really mean? Stoic Philosophy for a Troubled Mind the Stoics believe that tranquility can be achieved by facing negative circumstances with calm indifference. Negative visualization and accepting the impermanence of everything around us are some of the tools that they used. Stoics advise against becoming too attached to things as it leads to disappointment. Reassurance can also backfire and worsen anxiety in some situations. Detaching from Attachment the contemporary Buddhist approach to detach oneself from attachment and to see mental activity as weather. As human beings, we tend to get attached to people, things, and situations. However, nothing in life is permanent, and getting too attached leads to suffering when things change. For instance, holding too much value to good looks results in inevitable suffering when they fade away with age. In this book, the author discusses the contemporary Buddhist approach to detach oneself from attachments. The Buddhists analyze their mental activity as weather. The sky represents the human mind while the clouds, the sun, the rain, and the snow signify our feelings and moods that come and go with time. The idea behind it is that the sky does not cling to specific weather conditions or try to remove bad ones. The book explains how detachment is a solution to this dilemma. For example, if you detach yourself from your thoughts, it should not matter whether you feel like doing an important assignment or not. The problem is not a lack of motivation, but rather the belief that one must feel motivated. By seeing procrastination as passing weather, you can accept both good and bad situations to coexist with them. Overall, the book illustrates the significance of detachment and accepting situations as they come to improve one's well-being and deal with the impermanence of life. So, what's the key takeaway from The Antidote? It's time to break away from our society's obsession with positive thinking and acknowledge the value in confronting our fears, accepting failures, and embracing negative emotions. Oliver Berkman relies on examples and teachings from various philosophical traditions like Stoicism, Buddhism, and even the Mexican Day of the Dead celebrations to show us the value in facing life's uncertainties head-on, finding balance and personal growth. By understanding and accepting the duality of life, we can open ourselves up to profound experiences, leading to deeper happiness that withstands the test of time. It's not about denying the existence of negative thoughts and emotions, but learning to coexist and even thrive in their presence.